By the time I was 12 years old, I had moved 12 times. I've been to my fair share of schools over the years, so I'd say by now I'm pretty used to being the new kid. Though that certainly doesn't mean that I found it particularly easy to make new friends. I'd sit by myself at lunch, watching the other kids playing with their friends, and feel pretty lonely. During those first few weeks of living in a new place, going to a brand new school, and being the new kid, I knew that no matter how lonely I felt at school, I always had someone at home waiting for me to come. My dog Daisy has been my best friend ever since the day I got her, when I was just seven years old. She was my one friend when I had no friends. Coming home to see her so excited about seeing me helped me feel not so alone because I always had her. Unfortunately, my best friend grew old and walks weren't as fun anymore and even the simple task of getting off her bed in the morning became a struggle for her. Sadly, about a month ago, my family and I made the super tough decision to put Daisy down. My best friend crossed the Rainbow Bridge on the 2nd of July, 2020, at 12 years old. She was the best dog and best friend that anyone could ever ask for, and she was the one piece of stability I had whenever we moved to a new place. You know, I'm not sure whether it's the fact that Daisy's gone, or that my parents are selling our house, but it just doesn't feel like home anymore. It feels as though my sense of home is gone. Something that, throughout all these moves, has never happened before. I'm not too sure how other people reflect back on their lives, in each stage of their life, or even if they do have defined stages of life, besides high school and all that. But for me, I've defined my life in stages. Each stage, a different age, or categorised by where I lived at that time, what school I went to, and who I was friends with. If someone asked me what age I was when a certain event in my life happened, my default is to first remember where I lived when it happened. Like, I know that I learned to ride my bike when I was six because I lived in a caravan park in rural Mackay. I've always moved with my parents, so it's odd now, having them moving somewhere new without me. I guess this is just that stage of life as an adult where you begin to plant your own roots, and it's time now for me to find my own personal safety net, a place to call my own. I think I've found that. Well, I live in Brisbane now with my grandma, and I go to university to study film and television, so... I found a small sense of stability here, as it's now my own choice where I live and what to do. The future is never certain though, and even though I can, I don't plan on ever really staying in one place too long, as I've never felt myself get attached to a place, but more to the people who live there. I always get asked, why have you moved so much? And it's a variety of reasons, really. To give my brother and I a better education. To be closer to family. For something different. See, most people's mums will get bored of the way your house is set up. And you'll come home one day, and your living room is suddenly rearranged. My mum, she gets bored, and then one day you come home, and they've made the decision to move house. I'm grateful, though, in a way, for my oddly uprooted childhood because it means that I got to experience different walks of life, meet lots of new people, and learn how to make new friends, even from a very young age. I always used to joke that my family is nomadic, but I think in a way it's a good thing, and honestly, not that far off. I like it though, it's made me who I am. I'm 19 now, and this certainly isn't going to 